Hello everyone and welcome to the seventh webinar of the IBM Digital Nation Africa webinar series. Today's webinar topic is how to write a cover letter. I'll be giving you a quick review on some tips and tricks that you can keep in mind when you start drafting your cover letter. My name is Fatma Jamal. I work as a marketing and communication specialist for the IBM Digital Nation Africa program. I will be presenting the soft skills series for the webinar. So before we get started, I will give you a quick introduction to the platform. With the IBM Digital Nation Africa platform, you can learn. We offer a wide range of courses and tools that can help you learn about the latest technology trends. You can earn IBM Digital Badges, which are verified proof of your achievement. And these can be included in your CV and even shared on social media. You can uh, use the platform to innovate. Um, it gives you inspiration on how to build different solutions. Uh, it also provides you with the foundation of the design thinking process. And then you can go ahead and build um, innovative solutions using the free IBM Cloud Life services. You can also find jobs. Um, the Job Advisor tool is a way for you to search and connect with a pool of jobs that are relevant to your skills. Mm. Uh, you can uh, search by keywords, uh, location, company, or job role. Uh, um, the tool will also perform a skill gap analysis, um, and it will recommend learning paths uh, based on any missing skills that you may have. So let me just take you to the uh, landing page. So, right. So this is our landing page. If you have not registered for the platform, please do so by clicking join for free or register for free. So, so as you can see, we have three main journeys. So we have the Explorer journey. Um, here, um, there are a series of short videos. Um, they're very, very quick to learn. And they introduce you to the emerging technologies. Then we have the Innovator journey, uh, which allows you to create your own digital solution. So this is where we have um, in, um, we have tools to inspire you, and then um, there is the introduction to the design thinking process, and then you can actually go ahead and dive into some project-based courses. Um, and there's we also give you the access to the IBM Cloud Life account, uh, free IBM Cloud Life account, and then we have the new caller journey. Um, here you can access in-depth courses on emerging technologies. All courses are aligned to the latest job roles in the market. Right, so let's get back to our presentation. Okay. Okay, so today's topic is what, how to write a cover letter. And uh, my first question during the actual webinar, um, what I did was I integrated some questions within um, my presentation to make it more interactive. So one of the first questions I asked was, what is a cover letter? So a cover letter is a single page letter written to the uh, organization that you're applying to, right? Um, and this is like your first introduction to the person who may hire you and your goal of this, you, the goal of this letter should be to make it as memorable as possible in a good way. <laughs> so it is also sometimes called a motivation letter. So if you see that word, don't get confused. It's the same thing as a cover letter. Right. So the second question I asked was, do you think a cover letter is important? And the answer to this is, uh, it really depends on the situation, okay? So for example, if you know somebody within the company and you're going through like a referral, um, then obviously you don't have to uh, write a cover letter. Usually your cover letter and resume play a very key role when you're trying to get that initial interview, okay? Especially your cover letter. So, um, but obviously if you're going through like a traditional um, job, uh, you know, traditional way of finding a job where you don't know anyone, then it may be surprising, but you know, um, recruiters actually prefer a candidate who submit a cover letter. Okay, so there was actually a um, 
there was actually an article by Forbes where they said that 60% of recruiters actually preferred a candidate who submits a cover letter. But most of the time, unfortunately, what happens is that after reading like the first sentence or, or two of the cover letter, recruiters tend to lose interest. And this is because people often make the, make the mistake of, of repeating everything on their resume again on the cover letter. And that's not really what you want to do. Your cover letter is, uh, should you support your resume. So it's a supporting document, okay? It needs to tell a story of why you want to join this organization. It's also a great way um, to give recruiters an insight of who you are and an excellent, excellent way of adding important keywords into your application, which you may have missed out in your um, resume. Right, so what, how, how do you write a good cover letter? Now, um, here are some tips for that, uh, one, make sure your cover letter tells a story. So how do you feel connected to what the company does, right? Um, you need to explain in your letter what draws you to the organization. You need to show the reader that you get them, you get their organization, and this is where you're gonna build a bridge between you and that company. So you need to answer, why do I want to work for you, okay? And that is what you need to, uh, you know, that should be the theme of your cover letter, okay? Always remember the cover letter needs to be about the company and not about you, okay? To uh, be honest and positive, be honest and be positive, right? Um, the written voice that you're gonna use to introduce yourself, um, will you know, the recruiter will be able to catch it and will be able to understand whether, you know, uh, just with that tone, whether you fit their company or its culture, right? So it's very important to have that, have a positive tone and to be yourself. But having said that, you know, you also need to make sure that you're tweaking your tone depending on the type of company that you're applying to. So for example, um, your tone would vary for, um, let's say if you're applying to a law consulting firm compared to a startup, right? So, um, so you can do this by just literally going on Google, um, Googling the company, and then you can like read um, about them uh, in their about section or just go through some testimonials of employees or watch a few videos and you will, you will be able to gauge what sort of tone um, they usually use. And the most important thing is to connect your experience to the job, right? So you need to highlight around like two to three ways you fit the job description. Um, you need to make a case of why you are the right person for the job. So you need to list your skills and experiences that match the type of candidate that they're looking for. Now, a very important question that always comes up is uh, the fact that, oh, who should I address the cover letter to? Now, obviously, it needs to be addressed to the company, um, to the recruiter in the company, uh, or to the hiring manager, right? So that's obvious. Now, but a lot of people struggle on finding that contact because not always would you know, right? Um, so the best way that I approach this is that I go on on LinkedIn and I will try and find out. Is the job posted on LinkedIn? Okay, if it is, who is it reporting to, right? Um, do I have that information? Or who posted the job? Who's the recruiter? So I will go through that. So if I can find out anything to that, then okay. Sometimes the job is not list listed on LinkedIn. So what I would do is I would just search for contacts within that company and I will see who is the recruiter, um, and then, or, you know, who's a hiring manager, anything like that. If I can find that out, good, I will address my cover letter to them. If I cannot, um, the best way to go about it is um, to say, uh, dear hiring team, this is a much better way than saying dear sir or madam or to whom it may concern. I mean, you should not go with to whom it may concern. It's very vague and um, usually shows like, I don't know, the recruiters don't really um, appreciate that. So just write their hiring team, okay? Now, 
Formatting your cover letter is one of the most important things, okay? It needs to look good, crisp, it needs to be perfect. <laughs> so um, here are some uh, tips for that. So of course, include your name, email, and phone number. That's very, very important so they can contact you. Um, your cover letter should not be more than 350 words or maximum a page. You need to um, understand that you have to get to the point very fast, okay? So sticking to the right length is very, very important. Um, and this is because people don't have so much time. They, they're not going to read through paragraphs and paragraphs, okay? So try and stick to like around four short paragraphs. Um, in the first paragraph, you can talk about the introduction, the position you're applying for, and why you like the job, um, why you think you're a good fit. Um, in the second and third paragraph, you can talk about your skills, your achievements, um, show that you're qualified for the job. And you know here, you, like um, if you don't have previous experience, you can actually link like any projects or anything that you may have worked on in your university and how they relate to this job okay so you this is your chance to talk about all of that and in the last paragraph just mention you know that you're excited for the position thank the readers for their time um, make sure you end with like a positive call to action that's polite and open-ended um, suggesting that you're excited to offer more information you're available for an interview and now you look forward to talking to this person. Um, one of the very, very, very important things um, is to make sure you revise your cover letter. Now, a lot of times we will write the cover letter and we, we will go through it and we'll say, yeah, this is good to go. Um, this is a very common mistake. So just make sure you ask a friend or a peer, anybody, to go over it for you. And it's just because when other people read your work, they're more likely to find errors than you rereading your work. Um, so make sure it's free of grammatical errors. Um, there are no, no run-on sentences. Um, so have two or three people just revise your cover letter for you. Um, a very interesting thing that you may not know, but when you're going through an online application system um, and you know they ask you to upload documents, so make sure when you upload your cover letter and your resume, it's in a doc file. So it's not a PDF. And this is because um, these online application systems have a way of catching uh, keywords in your application. Okay. So if you upload it as a PDF, um, they, they will miss that. And your application may never even reach the recruiter. Okay. So based on keywords, based on the system picking up keywords, it's going to send it to the recruiter, okay? It's gonna decide whether you match it or not. So make sure you upload it as a doc file. And of course, um, try and adjust it to a contact within the company, try and send it to that contact directly if you can. So uh, I wanted to give like a short example of a good cover letter. Now, um, I thought showing you guys template is better. Um, just to give you an idea and kind of like a push on what can be your first cover letter. So as you can see, this is pretty short. It's clean. Um, you know, it doesn't overwhelm me. I don't have a lot to read. Um, it's highlighting my achievements. Um, it's highlighting any sort of challenges I may have faced and how I, over, um, how I uh, overcame those challenges. Um, it's also thanking the reader for their time and consideration. There is their hiring manager's name. And look how nice, you know, nicely this is done. So look, there's a date, there's a name, company, street address. So make sure this is a company's address, okay, not yours. So you, you need to put that in. But this is a very neat template. And honestly, you can use this as like kind of like your go-to when you draft your first. Now. Another question I asked was, uh, what makes a bad cover letter? And everybody came up with, um, you know, different answers and more or less everybody was on point. Um, you know, it basically a bad cover letter focuses more on what you want. It's, it's so full of yourself. It just talks about, oh my God, I'm like this, I'm like this, I can achieve this, I can do this, I can. So 
yes, you need to highlight your strengths. You need to say why you are good for the role, but at the same time, you should not have a tone that, you know, uh, kind of conveys that you're full of yourself, okay? And and honestly, um, at this point in time, chances are they've already seen your resume, okay? So you need to kind of talk about what you can offer um you need to talk about um basically what you can offer the company right and why you want to work for this company so that 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 should be your um goal for the cover letter um it's also uh, like i said even before it's a complete uh redundant version of her it's 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 completely redundant to your resume. So you're basically repeating everything that was on your resume on your cover letter. Again, this is not what you want to do. Like I said, if they've probably seen your resume. It's also very, very long and it's aimless. Okay. So we need to you need to make sure that you personalize your cover letter and don't take the reader on some sort of long route. Okay. Just be compelling and be to the point. Now I'll show you some examples of uh, bad cover letters that are out there. Um, so these are actual cover letters, guys, like nobody made these up, okay? So look, in this cover letter, um, this girl or guy is actually specifying um, the fact that they're not, things that they're not good at. So they're talking about, I'm only average at Excel. Um, I'm incapable of HTML. This is not, not, what you want to do, okay? And look, I'm sick of writing these pedestrian cover letters. You're sick of reading them. No, this is not the tone that you need to use. So um, your cover letter needs to be about your strengths, okay? You need to show that, you know, this is where you're trying to convince them that guys, please call me for an interview. So if you're gonna talk about the fact that you're just incapable of things or you're average at things, then why would they pick you over somebody who may have highlighted that they're excellent at some stuff or, you know, a majority of the skills. So that's an example. Then and this example is um, <laughs> really funny. Well, for one, um, it is really, really long, right? So that's a lot of text and it's very overwhelming for my eyes and I'm sure it may be for the recruiter as well. So they're not really going to go through it. It's also very... Um, full of themselves, um, this this writer is really, really filled with self-importance. Uh, so the way, I definitely possess the drive and dedication to, um, you know, succeed in this position, you know. I really think I was meant to be a, contrib a contributor's editor for Business Insider, right? Um, and then, you know, just the way he frames his entire cover letter, it's really, really bad. It's just, it's, it's just filled with uh, self and self importance, and that's not really what you want to get at. Um, and this is another one. Um, so this one is pretty negative. So they talk about, um, oh, the only reason I'm applying is because I study journalism. I don't even read much of your magazine. I know I'm not tailor made for this job. So why would you, why are you even applying and why would a recruiter want to recruit you after knowing that you're not even made for this job, right? So make sure you don't add anything like that. I know these, this, this, some of this stuff is quite extreme and um, I, I, it actually shocks me a lot that there are cover letters like that. So just make sure you guys keep uh, all of this in mind. Right, okay, so your cover letter is ready for submission when um, it is free of grammatical errors. So like I mentioned, make sure you ask your peers to review. Um, it's written in a way that balances professionalism with personality, so make sure your tone is really nice, friendly, honest, positive, but at the same time professional. Um, it should catch the reader's uh, interest from the first sentence and throughout. So you do that by making sure it's crisp and short and to the point. Um, your cover letter needs to tell a story um, that is filled with examples, so projects that you may have worked on or previous experience and how that relates to the job. And just make sure you stand out very 
positively as an individual um, and as a potential employee, because that is very, very important. Everybody wants to add positivity in their company, right? So make sure you're that. So that brings us to the end of our um, session. I did have a few questions during the actual webinar. Um, so I had one where um, someone asked me that, okay, if, um, if for example, um, if the job description does not specify whether you need a cover letter or not, what to do? So the idea here is that most probably the job description won't specify that. In fact, when you're going through an online application system, majority of the time only the resume section is mandatory and everything else, like any supporting documents, is like um, it, it's, a, it's not mandatory. So it's, like, it's up to you if you want to upload anything or not. But make sure you do, you know, because it kind of shows, not kind of, it, it, it shows that you have put in a lot of effort into applying for this job. You've actually done a bit of research. You've actually cared enough to, you know, tell, um, tell the recruiter why this company is so important to you and why you want to join this organization, right? So make sure you, even if it doesn't say, and all, even if it's not mandatory, make sure that you um, end up writing one, okay? Another question was, about salary, um, somebody had asked that uh, if they tell you to specify salary on your cover letter or resume, what do you do? Um, I'm yet to come across an example where, uh, you know, they say that you need to write your salary in your cover letter or resume, okay, but there can be extreme cases where, um, let's say, they do ask you. If they ask you to do that, uh, just don't write it on your resume. This you can mention it in your cover letter, okay? And um, get the average market uh, value for that. So see what's the average salary for a recent graduate in your country, and then you can base it around that. Usually, average salary. Sometimes they ask you on um, on these online job application portals, where sometimes they make it mandatory. So you can just enter it there if it's there but otherwise in your cover letter if it's not mentioned anywhere please don't mention it in uh, salary in your cover letter or your resume because this is your chance to get an interview and you don't want to seem like someone who's more after the money obviously it's important and that is why you have a you have quite a few sessions of interviews where you can negotiate this these sort of things okay all right, guys, thank you so much for joining. Um, thank you for listening to this webinar. I really, really hope it helped. Um, and I really cannot wait to welcome you to all the other webinars. Thank you so much.